Hey everyone, welcome to another Tag Tuesday. And I have another tag to do because I have been tagged again by Ellen from Ellen Made Book Club. Thank you so much for tagging me. She's always so good to include me in all the things, which is awesome. This tag is called the Reader's Profile Tag. How many times have I just said tag in one teeny little segment? Um, and it was originally created by Hillary at Book Bustle. And these were hard, hard, hard questions and I've had to think about them for a while and I don't know if I'm very happy with my answers. But if I pondered any longer, I wouldn't be able to film this and I wouldn't be able to edit this and then it wouldn't be Tuesday anymore and then what would we do, right? And for a second there, I thought maybe I'd already done this one because I feel like there's a similar tag out there that I have done way back in the beginning, but this is a fairly new tag so and I realized, no, I've actually not done this one. And then when I saw how hard the questions were, I'm like, no, yes, right. I have not done this one. So here's my attempt. The first question is, what for you makes a good book? So I didn't write down my answer, so I'm gonna wing my answers here. What for me makes a good book? <sighs> what is it that makes a good book? I think. I think it has to be writing that is engaging to me, which is subjective, right? I'm sort of writing other people might love and engage them, but it might not me. Uh, we've noticed that lately in some popular books out there that I didn't think were written so well, but people love, so their writing must be great for them. So anyway, writing doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be engaging to me, if that makes sense. And the characters, I don't necessarily have to like them, but I have to connect with them, shall we say. If I hate them to, to death and I don't really care what happens to them, then it's not, a, it's not a great book for me, right? What else makes a great book? I've always said I am more into characters than I am to plot. So really awesome characters, character development is more important to me than a crazy story, but I do love crazy stories too. So a combination of both of those really makes a great book. Edge of your seatness, not necessarily cliffhangers, but something that keeps you wanting to read. Um, excitement, uh, building, whether that's just, you know, intense love story chemistry or uh, you're just not knowing what's going to happen, that kind of thing. Um, I guess that pretty much sums it up, really. I mean, I feel like that's kind of the basics of what we all love in a book. I think if there's anything else really basic about what makes a great book that I'm leaving out, but I think that pretty much covers it. What are you currently reading? Well, when I was writing this down, which was last week, and figuring this out, I was reading The Unwedding by um, Ali Condi, but since then I have finished it and have started Demon Copperhead. Oh my goodness, finally I'm reading Demon Copperhead. That one's by Barbara Kingsolver, yes. So that's the one I'm currently in too. Yesterday I read about 25% of it, it's on my Kindle. See now that writing is, wow, that, that's grabbing me. That's really grabbing me. An amazing voice in that story. Um, I'll talk more about those in my wrap-up video, which I'm going to do also here in a minute. So look for that maybe tomorrow. Number three, what's the last book you didn't finish and why? I couldn't really remember one I actually started and didn't finish. Most of the time, the ones I s don't finish are like rereads. Like recently, The Count of Monte Cristo, I started and didn't finish, but it was a reread. So I don't know if I count that. I've also started Oathbringer which I have not finished, but I'm not saying that I haven't finished it yet because I'm saying I'm still working on it. <laughs> so it doesn't count, right? Because I'm still reading it. It's only gonna take me five years. So I can't think of what else that I actually started and didn't finish. Number four, what obscure book do you wish other people would read? So in a other recent tag, this, this was a similar question and I said, The Swoven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. So I guess I'll say it again, even though I don't know that it's actually that obscure, I just don't think people are talking about it very much. But, but maybe it's because in my circle of booktube, people aren't reading Y fantasy or something. I don't know. I need to get in that circle, wherever that circle is. Where's the Y fantasy circle? So yeah, people should read that one. I'm sure there are tons of other obscure books that I've read that nobody's ever heard of, but like I said, if I stressed about these answers too much, I would have never made this video. What's the longest book you've ever read? I'm guessing that the first two books in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson 
would be close. What are those ones called? The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance, yes? Those are both over a thousand. Um, both bringers like 1300. So those are probably up there with some of the biggest books I've read. I know I've read other books over a thousand though. So I don't, but I just can't remember where they are. Some of the books I thought were maybe over a thousand were like real close, like in the 900 something. So like Gone with the Wind, not quite a thousand. If you could have a dinner party with five fictional characters, who would they be? I decided to have a girl party and I'm going to invite Anne from Anne of Green Gables, Elizabeth from Pride and Prejudice, Katniss from The Hunger Games, and Liesl from The Book Thief. That's only four. I thought I had figured this all out, and now who is my fifth person? I was thinking of myself, because I'm gonna be there with them. That's five people. But I'm not a fictional character. I don't know. Tell me, who is another great girl character that would, would be fun to interact with these feisty girls? I was kind of going on a theme and saying some of the people from my favorite books be like Joe. Joe would be great. Let's have, let's invite Joe too from the Little Women. And Elizabeth, Katniss, Liesel, and Joe. That would be an awesome group of girls. I would love to hear them all talking amongst themselves. Okay. Five books you'd want if stranded on a desert island. So I know I should be practical and maybe have my, you know, survival book or maybe my church books if I want, you know, to keep my spirits up maybe, I don't know. But I just decided to think of five books that I could reread over and over again and disregard all the other practical things, okay? The Book Thief, Pride and Prejudice, A Tale of Two Cities, the Name of the Wind and Anne of Green Gables. I threw in The Name of the Wind, not because it's one of my most favorite all-time books, which it kind of is, but because I needed a fantasy in there so that I could escape reality. And I really love that one. I don't really talk about that one that much. Um, I'm sliding on my chair, sorry. <laughs> okay, we are on to number eight now. One book you could not put down. There's been a lot of books I couldn't put down. It's hard to pick how to choose. So I decided to tell you that one of them that I remember really just devouring was These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I've probably raved about this book before, but it is so, so good and I could not put it down. This is number nine. Five books or authors you will never read. Well, I never say never. And sometimes I think I won't read something and then I do and it's okay. Sometimes I might think, ooh, that doesn't sound like it's for me. I think I won't read it, but maybe I will later on. But at this point, Here's what I came up with. I probably will never read Colleen Hoover. Once upon a time, about last year, I was like, I need to find out what the big deal is with her. And then I decided I really don't. Pretty sure I'm not gonna like her books. So at this point, she's not on my radar anymore and I probably won't read her. I've, I've always said I won't read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, but I might change my mind on that one too. But it sounds like it'd be really hard. There are a whole bunch of, non-fiction books whose subject matter I probably would not really be that interested in that I won't read. One that came to mind is that one called Stiff about cadavers. I'm sure it's fascinating, but just the idea of it makes me a little ill, I guess. I'll just take you guys' word for it, but it's awesome. Recently, people have been talking about American Psycho. It is not a book I'm that familiar with, but especially the mild rumpus when he was talking about it in his New York tag. No, I will not read that one. Pretty sure I'm gonna stick with that one too. And the bird box, because I know that one's really scary. My daughter read it, she said it's amazing. I just don't think it's gonna be for me, along with a lot of other horror. And it made me think about horror books in general aren't my thing, but not that I won't ever read them but there's sort of a line that I don't want to really cross. And you look at a book and you don't know if that book is gonna cross the line. And I don't even know how to articulate what that line is. It's just a feeling, you know? So I don't even really know how to say what my line is. It's just that I could say this book I could handle and this book I probably can't, but I really don't know how to tell you why that is. So I was looking through the horror list and I was like, oh, I could probably read most of these, but I probably won't read a lot of them either, so. There's a genre for you, but 
the bird box, bird box is one that just popped up on that list and I was like, I probably will never read it because I just think it will freak me out too much. Okay, and number 10. <laughs> if you were to write a book, what would it be about? Is this where I get to plug the book I'm currently working on? I think I've plugged it a bit already. But if you haven't watched any of those videos already because you've been bored with my talking about writing, but you might be interested in this tag, so all of a sudden I've got you here. The book I'm currently writing is a YA space opera about a girl who goes on a space cruise and ends up... Uh, I don't know how to... if it's a spoiler or not. Anyway, she ends up getting kidnapped-ish by the enemy. So it's an enemy to lovers story and it is a little bit loosely based on Tristan and Isolde, if you know that story. That's what I'm writing. But I've also got a gazillion other ideas for writing and started other books. There's one about K-pop and there's one about um, traveling around Europe and the, the main character is like a tour guide. And so it's about the adventures they have with the little tour group she has. And I started one about a homeless kid in Portland. <laughs> Sounds so funny to say. Then uh, the one I finished is about two girls writing notes to each other in, in the 1980s in high school and their adventures of their junior year in high school. It's a fun rom-com type told in only just the letters that they pass back and forth. And then I wrote one that takes place on a farm during the summer. The girl goes there during the summer and falls in love with the, the guy who's kind of the farmer boy, you know, the farm boy. But stuff happens. Some creepy stuff happens. Those are the books I've written and thinking about writing and trying to write and want to write and yeah. If I wrote a book, I would write those books. I would finish them maybe. That's the end of this one. I hope you learned a little bit more about me in this reader's profile tag. Not that you even wanted to know more, but or maybe I didn't reveal anything than that, that I haven't already revealed in many other videos. But hopefully a little bit, I don't know. Oh, I didn't think of anybody to tag. And I can never think of people off the top of my head. I'm so sorry. So do it if you want to. Everyone who wants to let us know about your reading loves and hates, and I wanna know what you would write about if you were to write a book, then please do this tag. Until next time, happy reading, bye.